The next topic and the big topic we want to talk about today, just something that's, you know, always an issue. Uh, the topic is a top five F1, you know, student visa work issues when you're doing OPT, CPT, optional practical training, curriculum practical training. There are top five mistakes we see students do uh, that become very problematic in their ability to be able to work in the United States. And in particular, gain the on the job work experience, which is part of the student visa program in the U.S., for most programs for F1, once you, even during school, but especially after you graduate, you get at the very least one year of on the job training. And that's a big deal because that can lead to an employer filing a green card for you. During that time, I fall in love, get married and get a green card. It might create all other work opportunities and you, for, you might just go home, but you get one year of experience working at a top US company that opens up a lot of win doors for you, windows and doors for you, uh, jump in the window, through the window instead of going through the door and, and get some good uh, accomplishments back home. So uh, Anya, we're gonna talk about that. The first thing I wanna talk about is um, while you are in school, there are programs that allow you to work uh, while you're in class. So let's say you're in your second year of college, for example, you're a foreign student F1, there is a thing called curricular practical training. If what you're studying uh, it, it requires some on-the-job experience, the school can't permit it and allow it for you to work while you're going to school at the same time. That's called CPT. But what's very important is you have to get permission from the school. The school issues CPT for a certain period of time, let's say four months or five months from June 1st of you know four months later. Uh, and so it allows you to work. But it's important that you Get permission from the school. Make sure the I-20 is updated to know to show that I-20 is a form that really breaks down what your school uh, curriculum and program is. Uh, and you don't work past the time to have there. If you need to work more, you ask the school. And they'll extend your CPT time, but don't do it on your own. And always update the school as to what you're doing. If you want to change jobs, anything you want to do, you update CBIS in the system and tell the school as well. It is very important. We've seen people who do CPT or even they do internships. They're in law school, for example, and they do an internship for one or two months. You have to get the school's permission, notify them so they could update the system for that. I've had times where students told the school and the school said, no big deal, go ahead and do it. And they didn't update the system because they didn't understand the F1 student visa. That happens a lot, unfortunately, where the schools don't do what they're supposed to do as well. So you got to do it because at the end of the day, it's your responsibility. So update the government, update the school and update the government to see this, everything that you're doing. You want to go buy the books. So you don't get hit with an immigration violation charge later on. Uh, what about uh, number two, Anya? Could you help us with that? Uh, yeah, so one important thing that you have to be always uh, mind mindful of is the <clears throat> form I-20 and updating the form I-20 um, when you apply for um, for OPT. And um, your form I-20, uh, it has to be um, issued uh, not um, within the 30 days of you filing for, for OPT employment authorization document. And this is very important. Yeah, so form I-765, which is what you submit when you want to get optional practical training, OPT once graduating, or you, you can file it before graduating, uh, but the I-20 that updates that you want to get OPT uh, has to be issued uh, within 30 days of the submission. Now the submission is done online, but one big problem we had before was people get the I-20, they would mail it to the government, it would take, you know, they would send them a slow mail, for example, also it took two or three weeks, uh, and by the time anyways it got to the government's hands, It'll be 31, 32, 35 days after the Form I-20 was issued, and that's an automatic rejection denial of that work permit case, and it really messes things up. And so what happens is when they do reject or deny it, that you, you get notification, you have the case sent back to you, but sometimes it might take one, two, three months to get to even know that your case has been rejected. So uh, this leads us to number three about filing the case as soon as possible. I mean, what's the soonest you can file? Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add um, to the previous point that you were just uh, mentioning. Um, usually we as immigration attorneys, we don't like a USAS online filing because it has a lot of issues with that. They're still working on that, you know, but you know, specifically for, for this um, for this kind of cases, <clears throat> uh, it's if you're filing for yourself, for example, without an immigration attorney, all right, uh, probably it would be better to do it online because you get instant uh, receipt notice. And again, once they... I receive your filing. Um, you have you have um, instant notice, right? That um, they charge your card. Um, so it's uh, probably in this specific case would be better to proceed with the online filing specifically. Yeah, but at the same time, just do it as soon as possible. So what's the earliest someone can file for OPT? Uh, so filing window for OPT is ninety days before you graduate. Okay, and until ninety uh, sixty days after. Yeah. So uh, you have to file uh, within that time. 
and um, <clears throat> the soonest um, the better <laughs> yeah but um, in case something happens right your submission gets rejected for example again if you file by, by paper was John uh, what you were, you John was just talking about when your submission get back it gets back to you after like three months you yeah. know so the sooner uh, the sooner you file the sooner you will get the receipt notice or the result or if there was something missing for example in your submission and uh, you will you will have a chance uh, to refile yeah exactly you don't want to miss, miss that opportunity six days past we've seen it too and uh, where people make mistakes out of one case where a guy uh, signed the paper version of it with a digital signature online, which is not allowed with USCIS. And then all oh, by the time they returned the case to him to tell him, hey, it was an error you have to resubmit. It was past six days after graduating and he completely lost out on the opportunity to be able to study here. He had to leave immediately because at that point he was accumulating unlawful presence day. So it was a terrible situation. Uh, but you know, speaking of violations, uh, when you are on OPT, you're only allowed 90 days of unemployment time. So you had to make sure to count each day. You don't have gaps of employment during that more than 90 days. And if you are able to get STEM OPT, which is the extension for people that study in you know, majors in uh, science, uh, technology, uh, engineering, and math, they get additional time for STEM OPT. You can't have a total of 150 days of unemployment. Uh, and so that kind of leads us next thing because you might be unemployed and find a new job. Well, you know, you got to tell the school. So Anya, what's the most important thing because this happens for so many people but what's the number five point yeah so uh, a lot of people forget that they have to notify their school if they're changing the employer and they, they have to go online in the system what it's called like C cvp or something like that uh, yeah. to update the record notify the school and also uh, people uh, if you move for example if yeah. you change the address again you have to notify your school change the address in the system and you also have to file AR11, which is change of address form with USCIS. You can file it online now. Um, you don't have to deal with the mail. And um, again, your record will be updated within 10 days, but it's very important to do. So for students and a lot of students, they forget. Yeah, and it's simple enough. It's you just type in form AR, A as an Adam, R as a Robert, dash 11. It'll take you to an online website for USCIS.gov. You put the previous address, a new address, and, your, and whatever mailing address you want to use, your name, and then it goes in the system. It's that quickly. It is a legal requirement that every person that's not a citizen has to always update their address in the system. Most people don't do it. There is criminal penalties even for it and fines, but they don't really enforce it. But it's not really about enforcement. You want to make sure the government knows where you are in case they send you a notice. It gets your proper address. You don't want to get miss a notice. So it's very important that you always update your address. Yeah, and it's it's not just it's like a criminal offense. It's I think it's deportable offense from what I remember. But again, as John mentioned, they don't. <clears throat> I have never heard that they deported someone over that. But again, if they want to, in the, during like Trump administration, maybe it could have been the case, right? Yeah. But you still want to make sure that you always uh, you always follow the law. Yeah, you want to make follow line and get these notices. That's what you need it for. No way you are, so you can send you letters if you need to. And yeah. you know, we said that there's five. Days days. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we said there's top five mistakes. I was going to throw in a bonus uh, out there. This is for people who are getting the STEM OPT, the extension of their OPT, so they can work. There is a requirement, not when you're doing regular OPT. You can work for anybody. You could even be self-employed on OPT. But once you do STEM OPT, you have to have an employer, and the employer has to participate in the E-Verify program with the federal government. And E-Verify is that they connect their computer system for hiring with the government to check if people are authorized to work or not. A lot of employers, most employers are not part of E-Verify. So if you're working for somebody and you're a STEM major and you finish up the one year and you want to get the STEM extension, ask the employer beforehand, are you part of E-Verify? Do you work with E-Verify? Because if they don't, you want to know as soon as possible so you can find an employer that does and you don't mess out on the STEM opportunity. If they do E-Verify, well, it's easy. You just continue working with the same people. So check with the school so you don't miss out on the massive, wonderful opportunity of doing STEM OPT another couple of years here, more chances of filing H-1B, more chances of you know getting a green card uh, based on work, or all these other opportunities of being in the United States. You don't want to miss out on that just because of not knowing that the employers E-Verify and finding out too late. Thank you for watching this educational program. To get the latest videos, click the subscribe button and the notification bell icon. Also, help us help the immigrant community by liking this video and sharing it with your family and friends. You can also find us on other social media sites like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Twitter, where you find the latest updates on immigration news, policy changes, and tips. Be safe and God bless. See you soon.